Boom, here we are. We're live. Hey, what's up, Ward Wrestling Live? We're here again, man. It's another uh it's another day on the on the uh in the wrestling world. And uh we we have uh two amazing coaches down in South Florida uh at my alma mater, Miami Beach High. So uh my cat is already uh trying to get after my my screen here. And uh man, we got Anthony Nunez and Giovanni Linz. Man, Anthony graduated and uh, a Marine Corps veteran, so hoorah, I think they say. And then uh, Giovanni Linz, a Beach High graduate, wrestled at West Virginia Tech. Uh, they're doing big things to, to build the program down at Beach High. So uh, Coach Anthony, Coach Giovanni, man, welcome. It's an honor to meet you, an honor to see you. And, man, I, I love It's just that's my blood, red and white. You know, I, I grew up down there. So uh, good, to, good to meet you guys. Welcome on. Thank, Thank you for having you. us. Really appreciate you having us on and, uh, you know, extending that invite in beach high's name out there yeah uh, definitely man i'm so happy i did and uh i mean first of all i i know everybody's been affected by this and i know dade county man it's like the capital of the of this virus world in florida but man talk about what you guys have been doing uh, i'm gonna kill my cat here in a second guys <laughs> uh animal rights people that's not literal <laughs> Really kill it so don't like hit me up be like yo pita in the house don't worry i love my cat <laughs> uh, but uh man what have you guys been doing to uh to keep your kids motivated to keep their head on straight and to, to keep them ready for for when they do either have an off season or or get back to school well usually usually i mean with everything going on it's been a huge rock in the middle of the road because last year we were, we were going up and down the state competing freestyle and Greco during this time and having our kids lift and run and everything else. So currently, what we're currently doing to mitigate the standards is we're having Zoom workouts. So we'll meet up with our kids and we'll have a, them do a workout program with us, whether it's uh, uh, down blocks, sprawls, and a bunch of stuff. So we have 7, 12, 15 kids on there doing workouts through their phone. And then we also do map my runs and we have our, the kids post up their runs and stuff with their times. And we try to keep track of them during this off season time. But last year, that summer program that we had last year helped us achieve what we achieved this past year because of all the time we got on the mat. Yeah. Last, last season, last season was great. You know, last season we had a bunch of, a bunch of alumni come back actually a bunch of wrestlers that had graduated from beach and like different points in time or even alumni from like different schools um we got we got one coach that is actually going to be uh helping out a lot um coming up this next season who he he graduated from what uh gables I think so. Yeah, I think he graduated from Gabe or Goldman. Yeah, he graduated from Goldman. Goldman. Yeah. He's a three-time state champ. And now, you know, he, he's coming back. He's helping out a lot. Um, we, we've been blessed to have a lot of people that have come to support us uh, and what we're doing. So I know once this is all over, you know, these Zoom these – Zoom, workouts are what we're doing to keep the kids working but we're we're waiting for that all clear so we can hop right back on those mats you know i know the kids are itching for it we're all itching for it i haven't stepped out of off a mat this long in a long time <laughs> my son too As a matter of fact i just hit him up he came and got the damn cat out of the room <laughs> i was hitting him up he must have been out in the pool or something when i texted him because he came up with the Tower wrapped around them and stuff. But, uh, you know, man, that's awesome. It, it seems like everybody's kind of in the same direction, same method of teaching right now. And I know we've seen some wrestling rooms kind of open and, and we've seen some camps happen. Uh, I know my wife and, and I are still a little hesitant. The kids are still not allowed out. And um, I know we're supposed to be this tough sport, but. <laughs> They're still my wife's kids, and she's not going to allow me to do anything to put them in. I mean, that's understandable. In hard way. And she's Hispanic, so I'm not arguing. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> Understood. So when she says no, it's no for me. 
I mean, I might argue just to bust her chops a little bit, but I don't, I don't mean it because I know I'm going to lose in the long run. <laughs> hey, so uh, first of all, talk about Beach High Wrestling, man. You guys have, uh, I know, so Beach High had a, uh, a, a historic program back through the Camerati years. He was there for, gosh, I don't know, my, my whole uh, young life. He was there since I was a kid and probably before I was born and he's in the Hall of Fame now and and then uh, he kind of transitioned and retired and and it's kind of been up and down a little bit, right? But but you guys and your head coach have really come together and, and talk about the culture and the growth and the direction and, and what you're building there. I know this year you, you had a lot of success. Uh, there was tournaments I saw that you won for the first time in school history. There were district dual champions. Uh, you had three state quali- you had three state qualifiers and you had your your young freshman place at 113. So what a bright future he's got. But man, just talk about everything you guys are doing down there. Well, so I actually I actually started coaching at Beach High when I when I got out of the military um, in 2015. And um, when I started coaching, you know, we're getting kids as freshmen who've never wrestled a day in their lives and throwing them on the mat and saying, Hey, we're going to show you what to do. You do it. Cool. Uh, I think it was maybe about a year or so after that, that, um, we had a parent approach us who his son was going to be going to Nautilus and he was the state champ from Palmetto high school when he was back in high school and he ended up wrestling up at Penn State. Uh, now he owns a dental practice. And it's like, hey, my son's been wrestling since he could walk. And, you know, I live in Miami Beach and I really want for him to wrestle for you guys. But I noticed you don't have a middle school program. So the head coach contacted me and he's like, hey, what would you say if I said I wanted to open a middle school program? I'm like, I mean, that'd be great. We'd have a feeder. He goes, what would you say if I wanted you to be the head coach of the middle school program? I was like, oh, well, how are we going to do that? I still coach the high school. He's like, you'd have to coach both. So is the middle school on Miami Beach still Nautilus? Is that still the, the main, Nautilus middle school. main place? I know you – I know – there's been several elementary schools that have blossomed in, in over the years, but is, is Nautilus still that one kind of? There's Feinberg Fisher that also has a middle school. Um, well, it's elementary through middle. So we miss out on those Feinberg Fisher kids. And trust me, we wish we could get them too. <laughs> yeah. There's only so much you can do. I mean, especially at that time, it was only myself and the head coach so you know we're we're hopping in our cars going and picking up these kids you know we of course had to give paperwork to the parents like hey this is a personal vehicle form you need to sign this we're going to be taking your kids to the high school you know they had to sign all types of release forms and whatnot you know get the liability taken care of but um yeah man Coach Mingus is like uh, Coach Dominguez just posted. Hey, man, those guys are a prime example of what you know success looks like building through a feeder middle school program. So you guys are obviously doing it right through through the middle school. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. <laughs> so, yeah. so yeah. So now you got a Nautilus program, right? So now you got a, a middle school program. I mean, I got to tell you, back when when I was on the beach, man, some tough SOBs came through Nautilus. So uh, I don't know if it's still that way, but um, no, we got some pretty, we got some pretty, pretty solid middle school, solid middle school, especially, especially they're coming into high school this coming up season. I hope, I hope that everything reopens, everything reopens, because these kids, these kids are definitely going to shine this year. I mean, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, we're talking about kids that I've worked with since they got into middle school, and I've seen them grow from little, little chubby sixth graders and now they're walking around with their eight packs like <laughs> like it's That's awesome and is, the, is the is the Miami Beach PAL still uh around are they still involved in, in youth sports on Miami Beach 
Um, the the PAL still does some youth sports, but they don't do the wrestling anymore. I know Sun the Sun Kids used to be at the PAL. Um, that, that's no longer there. Yeah, I don't know what the gym looks like these days, but there used to be uh, like a back room that had mats. Uh, yeah, the, the mats that were there were the blue and yellow ones that our kids practice on now. Okay, yeah, there used to be. Uh, I remember you'd come in from the tennis court from the parking lot side. There used to be a side door. And um, you can go in there, and that's where kind of like the wrestlers practiced or the, you know, the fighters, whatever, boxers were in there and stuff. Um, MMA wasn't, wasn't really big. Then they had a big uh, boxing uh, rink right in the center of it. And because uh, uh, they used to do the McDonald's. I don't know, if they, do they still do those McDonald's boxing fights right in the middle of Collins Avenue? I don't think so, no. Yeah, they used to have these, uh, uh, like these youth parties or parades or police things. And police have, like, they, they put a, uh, uh, a boxing rink right in the middle there, right off of like 41st and Collins or somewhere right in there. And, and you'd have big, you'd have big uh, boxing tournaments back in the day, right there on the street. So it was pretty cool. Uh, That's what we were thinking about doing with the wrestling, having a little wrestling tournament outside with all the mats outside and having them wrestle outside in the field. That would be cool. Yeah. And that would be dope, especially with, uh, I mean, you guys got some. Uh, is South Point Park still there? I gotta imagine. It's still South Point there. Park still there. I mean, there's plenty of room. There used to be plenty of room there where the stage was and stuff. And you had mats. And I think Penrods is now like a party place, right? Yeah. Mickey Beach, and then uh, yeah, I mean, you got plenty of places there. I'm sure some of these hotels that have those private beaches behind them, you could probably set something up. I mean, I know. I know back when we were in high school, at least, the whole wrestling team, we were, we're we're trying to get that back. You know, these kids, these kids are close, but I think like when we were in wrestling, it was more just like a family and we used to barbecue together and we used to go to the beach and take our clothes and make a circle and yeah. wrestling. I mean, I think that's all stuff that, that you could bring back. I mean, I remember going down to South Point Park with all my buddies and They'd be jumping off the rocks there and not supposed to do that, but they would. Yeah. <laughs> and it would be fun. I remember, uh, I know this might date me, but OPP came and did a, uh, what was it? OPP, the song did their video there for MTV or whatever. I'm kidding. <laughs> right on the, what was that? Was that Naughty by Nature? It was yeah, Naughty by Nature. nature. <laughs> yeah. That was pretty cool. But man, so talk about your youth program. I know that, um, so you've got the middle school program going now. Uh, obviously, we're seeing success over the last five years because uh, I see what, what you did at the States this year, um, doing the district duels. I'll talk about the youth program as far as uh, as that goes. Uh, how's that coming along? Are you getting elementary school age kids? I think right now the biggest thing for our program is that, like, when, when Camerati retired, it was back in 2010, 2009. That's when the new head coach came in, uh, which is currently Fred Robbie, and he's been doing an amazing job, and it's been growing ever since then. And ever since then, we got alumni coming in, and we just started this Nautilus program with the with the youth kids. Is we're re, it's kind of rebuilding. It's a lot of rebuilding and a lot of touching back to the point where we want to get the elementary school kids, and hopefully one day have a feeder with elementary schools, middle schools, where it's just feeding right the whole entire system now as far as like it goes with the elementary school kids practicing with us so this is something that we started a few years back where um we just have open invite so officially we don't have like an official club program anymore it was just like hey these are our middle school kids these are our high school kids we're just gonna practice all throughout the summer we were taking them to tournaments and then you know one coach would be like, hey, you know, my nephew wants to wrestle, and he's like eight years old, nine years old, and we'd bring them, and next thing you know, we got a whole room full of little kids, and that we, man, this past summer, this past thing, right? This past summer, I had from uh, seven-year-olds all the way through high school, all in the high school wrestling room during the summer, just wrestling. And they're looking at me and I'm trying to like dumb it down a little bit to where it makes it fun for them. But at the same time, being hard on the high school kids. So it was, it was a good, uh, 
uh, media, uh, leveling it out for all for the whole yeah, entire. It's, it's fun to watch. I I I know. Uh, obviously, I haven't been to the club all summer because we've been doing this. But we used to get to the club for for the the bigger kid practice, and the uh, the little guys would be just you'd get to watch them practice a little bit at the club. And I mean, it it was it's amazing how the coach makes it so simple. Like you just see him taking their arms and putting them around each other's neck and then just kind of having to just, just to get that feel, you know, they're just holding each other with, what do you guys call that? Where you bring the hook around? A half or? No, no, well, he's just talking about. Just, oh, okay, just, just a, a simple a tie ups, some type tie ups. Yeah, they're just, they're just holding each other's neck and just, just to get that feel or just, you'd see him take their arms and put them under their, like a low hook, just holding mm-hmm. each other, just so they can get the feel of what that is, I guess. I don't know, but it, it definitely, and then all of a sudden you see the high school kids in there and you'd see his level just go through the roof and you start seeing him coach, like really coach, right? <laughs> so. yeah, that, that, and that transition, that's like the hardest part because I know when we started the middle school program and I'm working with sixth graders, first off, like I had just gotten out of the Marines, you know, I'm used to yelling at grown adults yeah. and now you're putting me to coach little kids and you know these kids are running around everywhere and I'm just like oh, oh. so you're not like underhook sir yes sir underhook sir yes sir great <laughs> I was so lost I was like uh, okay. yeah. right up the walls up down up down up down right as you do <laughs> you don't have them on pull up bars halfway up <laughs> oh no, i mean not official no, i'm joking <laughs> no we uh, well, it, it, i mean my talk about these uh, talk about these studs you had this year man talk about taking them to states i mean uh, you got to be real proud aaron lanster uh yep. one, you're 113 marshall carroll you're 152 and uh Kiko's Richardson, your 503 pounder. Actually, so Nikos came to us as a freshman, and his freshman year, this kid was 6'4, 325 pounds. He looks like a big boy, man. But his senior year, when he weighed in for states, weighed in at 235. He could have been a 220 pounder. He came a long way, you know, and if it weren't for some some injuries that he dealt with last season, he, uh, he ended up tearing his meniscus. And the guy that I, I saw the guy, uh, that big boy down in uh, that Chad, is it Chaz down in the Keys? Oh, yeah. He yeah. made it to the finals, but he got, he got, I think he got a little, was it? Yeah, I watched him in the final match at the Keys. That was pretty pretty fun man those big boys are they're hard to watch sometimes <laughs> i like watching i guess it's like mma and boxing i like watching like the young ones but um wrestle too yeah talk about the potential uh, aaron lanster i guess he's a freshman and yeah. he's already uh placed at state so man talk about the potential of that kid that kid it is that that kid is uh the main thing about that kid is I mean, with most of our kids now coming up into a program is a support from the parents. Uh, Aaron Lanster, his dad wrestled at Penn State. His dad was a state champion. So he has a lot of uh, shoes to fill up, you know, coming from his dad being so successful in the sport. And, I mean, he's going to be great. He's going to be awesome. He's committed. He has a – he's awesome in school. The main thing is, is just keeping him on that steady path of, of hey, you can do this. You you can do this. You can do these kids. You just got to believe in yourself. You know, the, the one thing that I really got to appreciate from the kid, though, is the heart. Like, you know, any, any freshman will come in, and if they even make it to States, they'll be ecstatic. This kid made it to States, and, like, there was no reaction because he knew that yeah. he was supposed to be there. If anything, he was upset at the fact that he only plays six. Yeah. Yeah. When you, when you look at the picture, he looks like. Yeah. He, yeah. he, he smoked uh, with him after and he was yeah. like, I'm pissed off at myself. And I'm like, I'm like, man, just appreciate what you've done, you know, as a freshman. 
you know, take it for granted. You lost uh, the person that was beating you all year was Danny. And that was a state champ in the weight class. And that's his best friend. One of his good friends, too. Is that so, Danny Martinez? Yeah, Danny Martinez. That kid was awesome from uh, South. Hey, don't they, they have Jesse Martinez, too, right? I think so. I'm not sure. But Danny Martinez. Yeah, that, the 3A, yeah, that 3A is tough. Danny's, Danny's dad, you know, he, he's been good friends with Aaron's father for a while. So, you know, those kids grew up together. But, yeah, I'm sure uh, – I'm sure Coach Mick would love them to move over to Miami Beach, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. I'll have to throw High Tide Harry up on my board after this. Yeah. Sounds awesome. That'd be good. I, I saw it, man. Hey, so, so you guys, what do you tell your, uh, what do you tell your upperclassmen? Uh, what, what do you teach them? Uh, as far as how to mentor and make sure that the young ones they're bringing up, uh, that there's a culture in this room that that means something, not just not just uh, wrestling wise, but academic wise too, and getting to the next level. Well, for us, you know, like I said, even when we were in high school, like the wrestling team, it, it wasn't really a team as far as it was a family. You know, we always we always tell these kids like wrestling isn't a sport; it's a livelihood. Like it, it goes way past just wrestling. You know, these are all skills that you're going to take on in life. Like I, I always tell my kids, I remember when I was in boot camp and things were getting tough, things were getting hard. And in my head, you know, I could hear us screaming in wrestling practice. Like I can hear because we, we have a little saying, right, where coach will scream, champions give their best. And our wrestlers will say, and a little bit more. And, you know, we've been doing that for years. And, like, when I was in boot camp, I'd be, like, on the brink of death, basically. And I'd hear that going over and over again in my head. And, you know, that helped me push through. And I told my kids, you know, once you guys do wrestling, then everything else just comes easy. Comes easy. Yeah, like this, I hear that a lot. Or, in the least bit. Yeah, my, my main goal, like I started coaching this year. I just came back. Uh, I was, I was, uh, came back from college and stuff and started coaching this year. And I told our kids, you know, I, we're not, we're not only trying to build a program to where we have a solid team going up to States, but we're trying to provide these kids with a future, you know, after the high school, we're trying to get these kids into college. We're trying to mentor these kids into the military and provide them with a way of life. So it's, it's one of those things that we tell our upperclassmen that, hey, like, you know, right now you're, you're turning from a boy into a man. You're 18 years old. You know, from here, like the decisions you make in life is, is going to be crucial at this moment. You know, after you leave high school and a lot of kids, they don't, they don't have those certain guidance of, hey, like, you know, or they have a parent like that. They'll tell them like, hey, like you. You have an opportunity to get an education. You have an opportunity to wrestle in college. You have an opportunity that all these doors can open for you. You know, you're doing the right thing and guiding these kids the right way. But it, it's it's tough because, I mean, we see it all the time in college programs. Kids get scholarships and then they go up there. And then after their first semester, they're ineligible. You know, so we tell our kids, hey, like, you know, school is important. It's important for you to create this habit now. You know, doing good in school because it'll transition, like, it'll transition on the mat. I remember telling some of our kids that were ineligible, like, hey, like, doesn't this, doesn't, don't you think this affects your wrestling? Because you're on the mat right now and you're worried about your school, you know, like, except worrying about wrestling, you know. Yeah, so, I think you hear that a lot. I think um, Coach Palazzo up at Lake Highland Prep, he said to me, uh, once, you know, I was doing the show and, and I talked to him on the phone because he's the club coach for my son. And he said, a kids, you, you want their goal. Their goal should be to graduate college a wrestler. He said, you would be surprised how many kids you look at. They come into the freshman class as a wrestler, but by senior year, they're just a student. And they, they, they fall out of that wrestling or that love or that passion or they're ineligible, like you were saying with athletics. And and he said, man, we want these kids to, to forget their goals to win championships, forget their goals to do things 
uh, on the wrestling mat. We want their goal to be for four years, I, I want to experience being a college wrestler and be able to graduate with a degree. And yep. it's, it's amazing. And you know, this is a guy that he, he does pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so you're, you're preaching the same thing and it, and it's good getting these kids. Plus, um, as, as a lot of these coaches have told me, uh, by getting them into college and, and getting them to graduate, they come back, they bring money into the community. They bring alumni now into the room. You've got coaches coming back. You know, how cool is it? You know, now I'm sure from the history of the Camerati days, there was, you know, Miami Beach High. My grandmother went to Miami Beach High. So that place has been there for years. I mean, they used to have Spanish class in Cuba, my grandma. They'd drive, they'd fly her on a plane a Cuba and a, you know, back then it was nothing, right? My, my grandma's 80 something years old. So uh, it, it was different times, right? So I'm sure there's, there's, there's been history, but, but now you guys are, are, are built, you know, wrestling is, is huge now, especially um, are, are you guys, are you guys looking at creating a, a girls team as well? Now that, uh, now that they're sanctioned, cause I, I remember getting out of school at, at three o'clock or whatever. And, Man, the girls were fighting in the street, and they were tougher than the boys. <laughs> oh, it's funny you mention that. We had a girl wrestler, right? Uh, I think she graduated about a year ago. Who? This girl, I think she wrestled two seasons, two years, and her first season, she like placed in the, GMA, the girls' GMAC tournament. Like her second season, she won it. Like. When I tell you that these girls are such hard workers, like we'd bring boys in and if we saw that the boys weren't given enough heart or, you know, they were having, you know, some trouble or giving us slack, we'd be like, all right, go wrestle Ashley. So, hello, do you have a Spanish wife, a Spanish grandma, a Spanish sister, a Spanish mom? I mean, come on. They're kicking your ass in the house, right? I got Spanish kids, Spanish wife, Spanish mom, Spanish. I mean, these girls are whooping your ass. So, you know, like, <laughs> hey, they can do their thing. But I yeah, I mean, I just had coach uh, Bob, Bob Howard camp. He said, I had an old boss say that people will live up to the standards and expectations you put in front of them. So, and that's great what you're preaching um, coach and uh, coach Linz and that, you know, and, and coach Nunez and, and just, yeah, it's going to be great. I mean, you see these teams now bringing kids back into the room that have that have wrestled at the college level and now getting that like yourself coming from West Virginia Tech. West Virginia, man, I've learned through my shows just to, since April 6th. I've, I've learned, man, West Virginia can wrestle. It's like Pennsylvania South. Um, we, all throughout Maryland, uh, when I went to college, a lot of guys from Maryland, a couple, the coach right now, uh, Dustin Stahl, he was from uh, – uh, he he wrestled at Wilkes Wilkes University, a D two school, and he did a great great things over there. And he's doing great things with the program right now. So I got I got warm up game coming on next. Donald Motley, he's a Virginia guy. He's got that that high school doing big things. They they won state this year. So shout out to him for the shirt. Got him coming on next. But hey, I got to get a beach high wrestling shirt, man. Show me some love. At least my alma mater. Definitely send you one. Yeah, I like it. Hey, so, uh, man, God bless you guys doing big things. And it's nice to see, you know, I, I left South Florida, you know, 97, 98. And people say that, like, my wife is like, you're, you're in Orlando now. You've been here your whole adult life, right? And I'm like, yeah, but, you know, the 305 made me, right? Like, that's, that's where I was born, you know? What did, uh, what did that homie say? Born and raised in the county of Dade, right? <laughs> <laughs> that was that was me back then, and we had a lot of fun. Fifth Street, you had, man, I remember Luke's club on Fifth Street. I don't know if it was his particular club, but he'd always be on the steps there uh, hanging out. You had, uh, man, you had Prince's club. Oh, they used to have these big foam parties when I was younger over where Prince used to have a club down there. The Man, the old Fifth Street boxing gyms. That's still there. Yeah. yeah. The PAL used to be, that's where all the kids would go. The PAL, the Youth Center, Must Park, Fairway Park, Stillwater, North Shore. I mean, that's where we all played sports. There was no, like, you didn't pay to play. You got to go 
play at the parks, you know, and that's how we all grew up. And it, and it was fun, man. So the beach, definitely a special place in my heart. I graduated from beach high. So did my mother. So did my grandmother. So my dad was a beach cop there for 30 years. My, my grandfather was a beach cop there for 30 years. My uncle, great uncle was a cop there for X amount of years. My, my great grandfather built the Marlin over on uh, what's it 14th or whatever right there back in and then he sold off those little hotels to uh, the the military to guard the beaches back during one of the world wars I don't know so um, there's a lot of history on the beach man and, and I always say man the best times were those uh, those early 90s when South Beach was just starting to, to come up a little bit it wasn't as you know now there's there's too many people right but yeah <laughs> but back then you you know that's that's when the low riders would come down south beach and bounce and you'd hear the the music and you could hang out in front of fat tuesdays or wet willies or mangoes or the clevelander or whatever and uh have a good time man it, tattoo by Lou's, gino's pizza you know it was all it was all part of the history down there right so, wait, wait. so all right man i'm gonna get into my 10 questions you ready all right, Ocean Drive or Lincoln Road? Ocean. I'd say Lincoln. Lincoln, all right. Mangoes or the Cleave? Mangoes. <laughs> Shout out to Josh Wallach, another Beach High graduate. Oh. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Espanola Way or Washington Avenue? Mm. I like Espanola. Espanola. Yeah. <laughs> Joe Stonecrab, Smith and Walensky. Smith and Walensky. Yeah. <laughs> Nikki Beach, Hallover Park. Hallover. Hallover, I would say, too. You don't like the fake boobies? <laughs> <laughs> we got Hispanic women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wet Willies or Fat Tuesdays? Wet Willies. Wet Willies. Right. Uh, David's Cafe or Las Olas Cafe? Las Olas. Las Olas. Yeah, and David's has a lot of history, too. They used to have, like, two or three of them. Huh. Um, Big Pink or Cheeseburger, baby? Big Pink. Big Pink. I like the breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what did I write down? Pink Taco or Down and Dirty Tacos? I don't know. I don't know, know about any of those. Uh, me neither. I just saw them on the map. Uh, <laughs> now, you know about these two because these two are legendary. They've been there my entire life. Master's Pizza or Gino's Pizza? I'd have to go with Gino's, Gino's, even though the Gino's that used to be on, uh, whatchamacallit? Washington? Collins. Alton. On Alton. The Gino's that used to be on Alton right there, close to like Purdy Lounge. They shut that one down. Yeah. Yeah, so you'd come out of, uh, they used to have a club like Charlie Brown, and then you had Club Liquid that used to be down there, and there was all these different clubs, and you'd come out at night, and you'd just walk up to the window, and you'd get a slice and a Coke. Uh, but yeah, yeah master's pizza right there on alton road i remember the original master's pizza and then it moved down the block there um i used to get in trouble because uh, my dad was a police officer so they they, they kind of knew me and the motorcycle cops would park out in front of masters to go get and i would i would buy these rainbow flags over on lincoln road and i'd stick them to the back of the motorcycles <laughs> i would get in trouble my dad would my dad would laugh but it wasn't but the cops that I did it to were, they didn't yeah. think they were laughing that much. <laughs> well, yeah, it was cool. It was fun. And, uh, you know, doing things kids do, right? Yeah. So we had a good time. Uh, Greg Gear, I spent four years laboring in a room where my practice partner was a national champ. So glad I stuck it out, and I'm so glad I did it. So good stuff, man. And, and uh, man, I posted, you know, I shared this in a bunch of rooms while we were live. You know, hope the nation sees the beach. And uh, um, I always do that with everyone. And please feel free to share it in your Miami Beach wrestling room. Feel free to share it wherever you want to share it. Um, I usually do 20 a week. That's what I've been doing is 20 a week. I don't know how that's going to sustain as people are getting back into wrestling. Um, but uh, usually on Saturdays, I wake up and I, I put everything onto, you know, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube. So um, when I do all that stuff, I'll message you guys. I guess, uh, who have I been messaging? That would be me. Okay, cool. So 
when I, uh, but I'll shoot you guys my, my cell phone number and everything so we can keep in touch, man. And, and, uh, you know, definitely when I come down, man, uh, I'd love to meet you guys and check out the old stomping grounds. Hey, you're always welcome. I know wrestling is open to your son too. So when you want to come down and get a good practice, just let us know. Yeah, it's awesome, man. And, and I saw that another guy that, uh, there's a guy coming on Friday. He just opened up Island Style down in Island Morada. Oh, so, okay. Uh, Dia, Diamante. Diamante. He's a big heavyweight. Uh, I forget his name, but uh, he's, he just opened up Island Style over in, uh, in Island Morada. So I got him coming on on Friday. We'll shout out his, uh, his wrestling program too. And that's good for you guys because, man, take a trip down to Island Morada. It's the upper keys. You're not going all the way down. Got a little room. You can chill in it. it looked like uh, this week he had, uh, I saw he had Zach Sherman in there. He had Bryce Marcus in there. He had a, another kid in there. Oh, where they, yeah. they, were, they were rolling around. So uh, nice. it's good for me too because now I come to the beach, I bring them to you. If I go down to the Keys, we got Isle Style. If I go down to the Key West, we got the Conks, right? So I'm getting to know people. I can't wait to get out and about in my pickup truck. <laughs> I'm going to just buy a tent and put it on top of my pickup truck and I'm just going to hit the road and we're just going to get, get to meet everybody. It'll be fun. But Hey man, I'll message you guys, my cell phone number, keep in touch and uh, man, keep that beach rolling, man. I, you know, there, there's some legendary sports programs and some big time athletes that have come out of the beach. I'm sure you've looked them up. Yes. I mean, Samari roll is an all American. Uh, he was uh, he was an NFL pro bowler. Terry Cousin, Dwayne Starks over at the U. Uh, you've got, uh, man, some big time baseball players uh, came out of there. They used to play. I remember watching the Conseco brothers play baseball over at Flamingo Park. And they would hit, I don't know how the baseball stadium is over there now, but they used to be like back to back. The outfield would be back to back where the stands were. And he would hit, he would hit balls from home plate to home plate. <laughs> like, he was just a beast. And, and you know, uh, baseball used to be really good down there at Beach. I don't know. How, are they still doing pretty well? The baseball team is doing actually really well. The baseball team and the soccer team. Yeah, you got that that Hispanic blood, man. Those are the sports, right? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I had uh, Echemendia on, and um, and he said, man, those those guys down in South Florida need to get these Cubans on the mat because we're tough. That's what he said. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he's doing some big things, but Hey guys, man, thank you so much for coming on. I'm, I'm absolutely honored. You're welcome on here anytime you want. Um, and, you know, just shout me out. If you guys want to do anything, please feel free to post what you want in my group, share this. And uh, once I get on the other platforms, I'll share those with you, like the links to Spotify and Apple podcast and YouTube. But I do have a YouTube page. It's kind of growing a little bit. There's like 150 people. I have no idea how to do that. <laughs> and, uh, and cross my fingers, but it's there. So. Uh, feel free to go back and listen to some stuff. I got a lot of college coaches that'd be good for the, the kids to listen to. And then I did something with, um, with coach, with ref Cipriano, where he did the 27 signals and, and why they do that. And, and that's always good for you guys to give to the young kids and parents. So um, that's about it. That's all I got. We can talk more about Miami beach because that's my home, but <laughs> other than that, I'm done, but thank you, man. I appreciate you guys coming on and, uh, you know, keep building that beach high, man. Most definitely. So, most thank you for having us. Yeah, those high tides. <laughs> Have a good one. Have a good one. You too, sir. Bye. Bye.